Hello everyone. Today we cover an important topic in marketing on how to estimate willingness to pay using a conjoint analysis. The method fundamentally would involve letting consumers make choices. Ideally, if we ask consumers what is your maximum willingness to pay directly, and they can tell us the numbers, that'd be great. The problem with this method is. Uh, although consumers are sensitive to prices, when you ask them directly how much was your maximum willingness, to pay, they will tell you that they don't have a very very specific number in their mind. Often they may have some vague ideas, but they just don't have WTP for you. A second problem, of course, is consumers may not want to tell you their true maximum willingness to pay. Because let's face it, if consumers tell you they're willing to pay, you're going to charge them that price. With that in mind, consumers may tend to understate their willingness to pay. So that's a big problem in survey research. So they cannot get honest, accurate willingness to pay numbers. What do we do then? A solution in marketing that has been proved successful in the marketplace. Is not to ask consumers directly what their willingness to pay are. Instead, we're gonna let consumers make some choices, like in the actual market conditions. We don't ask how much your willingness to pay for something, but instead we show you a bunch of products and let you make choices. Then, as market researchers. We figure out how consumers were making trade-offs between price and the different product features. So here are the steps of a conjoint analysis. First, we offer consumers a set of products or services and ask them to make a choice. So here, I'm showing consumers three different iPhones and ask them to make choices. As you can tell, these iPhones have different what we call attributes or features. They have a different number of cameras, and、uh, different prices, different screen sizes. And then、uh, this part we don't observe is consumers are going to evaluate these options, and then we ask consumers to tell us what they choose out of the three options. So that's the experimental part of a conjoint analysis. The tricky part, of course, is to figure out what consumers are thinking in their mind. Let's look at the information that has been presented here. What we have shown to the consumers are the products and their features. So, in this case, the number of cameras, the processor, color, the storage, and the size, and of course,、uh, the price. And what we ask for from the consumers is which products do they choose. We want to figure out how consumers are using the information input from the left-hand side to get to their choices on the right-hand side. We give consumer the access, and the consumers would tell us which products they would choose. They tell us the whys, and how consumers went from X to Y is how much consumers value. Each one of these attributes or features, and the beta are the important scores that consumers give to these features. Does this look familiar to you? This is actually a regression. We have x's, we have y's, and we figure out the coefficients on the x's, so the betas. Now, what we get from a conjoint analysis is basically the betas. That is the regression coefficients for all these different attributes: the camera, the processor, the color, the storage, the size, and of course, price. So, how this works? We assume、uh, consumers are considering all the attributes of a product jointly, and、uh, how much they like the product is the sum of how much they like each one of the attributes. For example. Uh, let's say you go on Tinder. You want to make some swipes, 
And the question is, do I swipe right or do I swipe left? And here we are modeling this process using the formula provided here, whether we swipe right is basically a combination of the distance of the person, the looks of the person, and the descriptions. And when we sum them up together, that's how we reach the decision of whether to swipe right. That's basically the underlying premise of a conjoint analysis. That is, things can be decomposed into attributes. And then when we combine them, we can reach the choices or judgments in totality. Here's an example of hotel choices. I'm going to show you a conjoint analysis example online. We tell people that we are interested in uh, knowing how you make choices of uh, hotels in Miami, Florida. And then um, what do we give consumers in a conjoint analysis? As you can see here, we give them three options. One, two, three options and plus a none of the above if they don't like these three different options. We can give them two options. Uh, we can give them more than three options. And in this case, as you examine each one of these options, what we have shown consumers are the brand of the hotel. Is it Airbnb, Hilton, or Marriott? The location, the average uh, consumer ratings, number of ratings, and also shows you the one through five stars. And finally, the price per night for the hotel. By making choices, A consumer will go through a series of options here. And then usually we go between 10 to 12 different choices uh, to make sure there's no fatigue and other issues with a survey that is too long. Uh, once you complete these choices, so in the back end of the website, the responses have been stored and a data analysis engine would analyze this essentially running a regression to figure out the betas. Here's what the output from a Kanji analysis looks like. So we have features, uh, the attributes, brand, location, average rating, number of ratings, rating distribution, and the price. And these features can take different values. For example, um, the rating distribution can be a bell shape, U shape, or flat. Um, each one of those features have multiple levels. And the results from the regression will give you these importance coefficients. So these are the, basically the coefficients from the regression. And uh, um, for example, in this case, uh, for brand, Hilton is 15, Marriott is 14, and Airbnb is zero. So uh, zero here is just the baseline. So comparatively speaking, Marriott and Hilton both are 14 or, and 15 points above Airbnb. What do these uh, important points mean? Uh, let me give you a more specific example. So with these important points, we can score a hotel with a combination of different attributes. For example, here we have a hotel uh, that is uh, Hilton Beachfront, average rating is 3.9, number of ratings uh, is 10, and uh, the uh, rating distribution is a U-shaped distribution. So there are uh, quite a few uh, very high and quite a few very low ratings. And the price is $120. The important scores on these different levels are on the right. To score this hotel, what we have is 15 plus 5.6 plus 2.7 plus 0 minus 1.1 minus 15, and the total is 7.2. This score itself is not very meaningful. It is, however, useful when you compare this hotel with a different 
hotel specification. So the relative score matters. The absolute value、uh, itself does not. Where does willingness to pay come in? So here's how we process、uh, these importance coefficients. Let me bring your attention to the、uh, bottom of these analysis on price. So different price levels: eighty, one twenty, one one sixty, and the important coefficients are zero, minus fifteen, and minus twenty. First, we checked importance for the highest price and、uh, the lowest price. They are、uh, minus twenty and zero. Then we calculate how much each unit of importance point is worth in dollars, because we have the price and we have the importance、uh, scores. The importance range is equal to twenty minus zero, so from here. And、uh, for the price difference, that is between one hundred sixty dollars and eighty dollars, so the price difference is eighty dollars. Now, twenty points. Eighty dollars. Each unit of importance is worth eighty divided by twenty. That is four dollars. Remember that we have importance scores on all the other attributes as well. Now, if we know how much each unit is worth,、uh, we can actually calculate how much each one of those features worth. That at the end of the day is consumers' willingness to pay for those different features. Let's say we ask the question, how much more valuable is Hilton compared to Airbnb? Remember that one unit of importance is worth four dollars, as we have just calculated. Hilton is fifteen points above Airbnb in terms of importance calculation. So fifteen minus zero, and then the fifteen points times the four dollars per point. We get sixty dollars. What this means is this consumer is willing to pay sixty dollars more for a room at Hilton versus Airbnb. Similarly, we can use to calculate how much consumers are willing to pay for a beachfront versus in the city location,、uh, etc., etc. For all the different attributes. Let's recap. Kanji analysis is a time-tested way of extracting willingness to pay reliably. It has been used hundreds, if not thousands, of times, and there are businesses using Kanji analysis to conduct market research for large companies, companies like Apple. For this method, the basic premise is consumers are not considering one attribute at a time. Instead, we evaluate. The combination of all attributes jointly, and the consumer's overall preference is the sum of、uh, the utility that they derive from each one of these attributes, and how much that attribute level is worth to them. If you want to apply Kanji analysis in your marketing research projects, try out Kanji Analy. That's all about Kanji analysis. Thank you. I'll see you next time.